¿no? Welcome back and it's now time for In-Depth. Many Jamaicans were waiting with bated breath to hear whether the government would fulfill its election promise of removing income tax for persons or workers who earn up to $1.5 million. Well, it seems the Jelpi administration in Jamaica may have passed its first acid test as Finance Minister Audrey Shaw on Thursday as he opened the 2016-2017 budget debate noted that the government will be increasing the income tax threshold to $1.5 million for all PAYE workers. Mr. Shaw says some 251,000 workers are set to benefit, but there are some variations to the plan which will now be implemented in two phases. The first phase of the non-taxable income threshold of $1 million will be implemented effective July 1, 2016. The second phase will see the full $1.5 million non-taxable income threshold for Jamaican workers taking effect on April 1, 2017. Now to help me discuss Mr. Shaw's budget presentation, we are joined by financial analyst Colin Steele and political analyst Mr. Kevin O'Brien Shang. Thanks for joining me, gentlemen. Hi, hi everybody. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, let's begin with you, Mr. Steele. What did you make of Mr. Shaw's presentation? Okay. Good evening again. Um, it was a, a typical Audrey Shaw presentation. Serious matters interspersed with, with, with comedy. <laughs> I think he made a very important point about economic growth. Um, he gave a history of Jamaica's really low growth rate compared to the rest of the world. And most importantly, it was a prudent, it was a prudent budget on the table by, by extending the period to meet the 1.5 million threshold to next year, essentially doing it in two parts. There's no doubt that the PAY person, persons have an unfair burden, considering there are only 400,000 PAY workers and 1.2 million in the day before. So what this does is to spread the burden of taxation over a wider range um, of persons and also the tax is easy to collect because the gas being tax you collect at the port and the travel tax you collect at the airport. Okay, so I think Mr. Overall, it was a good presentation. Okay, thanks, Mr. Steele. Mr. Chang, no, the 1.5, that's what everyone was listening to here. And Mr. Chang, are you pleased with how the minister is implementing the tax proposal? Um, overall, I would say yes. I would give overall 7 out of 10 for the whole thing. Um, it, it's good and bad, but probably more good than bad, you know? Um, he has kind of reneged on the promise. It's not 1.5. They promised April 1st, 1.5. Well, it's July 1st, and it's only 1 million. But then again, more people get the million. Before it was only those 1.5, and now everybody gets the million. And then they say 500,000 next year. I'm not so sure I'm convinced about the numbers for next year, but let's just deal with this year. Um, they're going to fund it with gas taxes, basically, if you will, tax, airport tax, and cigarette tax. Um, cigarette tax, no problem. In fact, you should tax it even more, you know. Um, the airport tax, I guess, I might have some slight knock-on effects with tourism and all that, but let's face it, they can fly on a plane, $15 US is not that much. The gas tax will have some knock-on effects of, you know, raise electricity prices, raise gas station prices. But then oil has come down so much from $120 a barrel of a couple years ago to forty dollars an hour. There's a lot of leeway. So I have no problem with them putting a gas tax on. In fact Obama did a similar thing in the US to, to stop excess consumption. The people who are gonna suffer though are those are under six hundred thousand. They're not getting any break um, from the increased threshold. They're gonna face slightly higher 
electricity bill, slightly higher tax fares and stuff. So the government should going to have to find some way to alleviate the, the pressure on these, on these people under 600,000, and those, of course, who don't pay, pay UIE. So, as I say, good and bad, more good and bad, but not perfect. Okay. 7 out of 10. Okay, okay. 7 out of 10. Fair enough. Mr. Steele, now the IMF's blessing was critical to this plan, and Mr. Shaw said that himself and Prime Minister Andrew Holness sat down with the IMF in discussing the initiative. What does this say about the viability of the plan? Well, the IMF would want to see um, revenue measures that, are, that, that you can rely on. And the revenue measures that have gone into place are, are, are easily, it's easy to calculate and easy to collect. One point I forgot to mention, because it's in two parts, and the total cost of the program is $30 billion. Only $12 billion has been accounted for in this year. It will need to be another tax package next year of at least $18 billion, assuming the growth rate is as budgeted to cover the second phase. So the, the taxation is not over, but I still think the government's indication that they want to move from direct taxation to indirect taxation is something I support. As the minister said, people prefer to have the money in their hands and decide how to spend it. You can decide to drive a smaller car to save on gasoline. But, Mr. Chang. Yes? It's very important, I think, to the JLP's legacy because they announced uh, a grand election promise and Jamaicans are not normally used to election promises or most election promises being fulfilled. Mm. What does that say about the, the JLP's political legacy? Well, I think this is what they had to, had to implement. Come the whole this repeatedly said, I don't make promises, I make commitments. So this one was fundamental to his, to the JLP's future, and Mr. Holness in particular. He's always saying, I'm different, I'm not the same. He's gone some way towards saying, yes, I fulfill my promises. It's not a full fulfillment, but, you know, half a loaf is better than none. So I think he has come out, the JLP has come out with credit, and Mr. Holness. And uh, as I say, people will say, okay. You haven't done badly, and the JLP, you might well see them drop the local government election in a month or two to capitalize what will be uh, so much of a boost in, in um, credibility, I believe. But again, they have to think about the people who are under 600,000 and who don't pay PAYE, that they are going to suffer not a whole bunch, but a little bit with a 7% increases. And uh, I think they have to have come some mechanism to alleviate that, I mean, both in practical terms and the political terms. Okay, staying with the political impact of this tax plan imp implementation, Mr. Steele, Dr. Phillips was not in Parliament on Thursday when Mr. Shaw delivered the opening budget debate, but how do you think the PNP will counter this one? Because they were among the critical groups saying that this plan was not feasible. Um, I don't think that the PNP ever said it was feasible. I think the PNP said that it was not feasible without raising taxes. Um, and that has, turned out, that has turned out to be the case. And they also said that the cost of it was going to be $30 billion. But it boils down to the fact that, that, that a lot of people would prefer to have money in their pocket. And pay higher consumption taxes than having the government make the decision on how to spend their money. So even, even, even though it, it didn't turn out as, as, as had initially been contemplated, the fact is that it, 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 there's a balanced budget, which is most important, and there's nothing wrong with reallocating taxes. We don't do enough of it. The only thing I would criticize, and it's not really a criticism, it's, it's, it's a reality that we should, we should continue with tax reform. There are lots of other areas that we need to reform. Um, and hopefully this is just a start. Well, outside of the 1.5 plan, Mr. Shaw did mention other things in his budget presentation. He spoke about the trade imbalance Jamaica shares with its Caribbean neighbor, Trinidad, and how he's looking to 
shave that down a bit. What's Absolutely. your take? What's your take the on that? The, the issue there is Trinidad has been subsidizing their entire economy. Um, fueled, fueled, and that gives their manufacturers an unfair advantage over our manufacturers. Mr. Mr. We've, also, we've also been incurring higher bills for, for diesel and gasoline imports because we weren't negotiating the price and we were, we were being sold those goods at a higher price on other non-caricom countries. So there's, there's definitely something there that we need to deal with. And just before we go, Mr. Chang, I want to give this one to you. Mr. Shaw spoke glowingly about tapping into the marijuana industry. He says that Jamaicans need to be more economic about pursuing this venture. He says it's not about just acquiring that two ounces for the man on the road, but we need to tap into the wealth of the marijuana industry. Do you think that's a good venture to, to go into? Probably, I don't know. That marijuana industry is so unknown that it's a lot of PR in my view. I, I agree with Mr. Steele um, more specifically on the tax reform needed. I do hope they have come with a comprehensive plan next year. We can excuse they only had two months this year, but just fulfilling an election promise is not tax reform, you know? They have to come with a bigger and better plan. If they want to really get the economy growing, that is in the become more efficient overall. And as Mr. Steele said, better allocated. It's not well allocated now. So to me, this can be just a start for the JLP if they are serious about growth and tax reform. Well, what's your take on the cannabis industry, Mr. Steele? There's a lot of competition. Um, and I think we need to be organized. There's a lot of competition and there's a lot of legal, legal issues moving across borders in the States. Um, so I'm not sure, I'm not sure how large an industry it, 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 it's likely to be initially for us. Okay. California, California grows a lot. The U.S. has a huge industry. So is, can't you make a compete? We don't have any idea. Okay, so you don't think it's one of the most lucrative industry for us for us to pursue at this time? No, it's one of these silver bullets the politicians throw up. Let's get our basics right. And we're always looking for these magical, easy silver bullets. I want us to get the basics right, proper taxation, and that is a far more important thing than looking for not on one of these things that are going to save us. They never have saved us. Okay, I guess that's where we have to leave it, gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining me.